We've had a few technical difficulties this morning, but I believe we are ready to begin. The Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. Keep silence. Keep silence. Keep silence before Him. Good morning. You can see we fixed the speaker system now, can't you? Uh, it's good, good to be here this morning, good for all of us to be together and worshiping God on this first day of the week. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. <coughs> a senior life group will meet Tuesday morning in the basement of the Parsonage at 10 a.m. Uh, and on, also on July the 9th, and that's a couple of weeks away, but... Uh, we're asking you, be sure and pick up the announcement sheet, just like every Sunday that Adam does for us. And also there is a summary of the building committee that has met and has done a lot of work. Pick one of those up also. And then on July the 9th, on that Sunday, following our worship service, just very short, we will have just a brief discussion and sharing of information on it. In our worship service this morning, BJ will be uh, directing us in prayer and reading our opening scripture. Brian Pulley will be having our, our Lord's Supper and helping us in that endeavor. Albert will be reading the scripture. Andrew will be having our closing prayer. Let's worship God together. Mm -hmm. As I travel through life with its trouble and strife, I have a glorious hope to give cheer on the way. Soon my toil will be o'er, and I'll rest on that shore where the night has been turned into day. Up in the beautiful paradise, valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Though you roam the hillside, or I list to the tide, as I pluck the sweet flowers that grow in the dale, a faint picture is there of a rose bright and fair, where perennial flowers ne'er fail. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden beneath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Though your garden is rare, it is not to compare with the flowers that bloom in the garden above. In the midst of it grows Sharon's perfect sweet rose. Tis the wonderful flower we love. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley 
will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. This morning, Adam is going to be speaking to us about uh, the true vine. And uh, I think a lot of today is going to be talking about brotherly love. And so uh, our songs this morning, for the most part, are going to be talking about love for each other. <clears throat> How sweet, how heavenly is the sight when those that love the Lord in one another's peace delight and so fulfill the word when each can fill his brother's sigh and with him bear a part when sorrow flows from eye to eye and joy from heart to heart when free from envy scorn and pride our wishes all above each can his brother failings hide and show a brother's love when love in one delight full stream through every bosom flows when union sweet and dear esteem in every action glows. Love is the golden chain that binds the happy souls above. And he's an heir of heaven who finds his bosom glow with love. Now before our prayer, let's sing, Abide With Me. <clears throat> Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, Foil 
the tempter's power, who like thyself my guide and stay can be. Thou cloud and sunshine, oh, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is destiny? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Hold thou thy cross be for my closing eyes shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's faint shadows flee. Oh, Lord, abide with me. The reading will be John 15, verses 1 through 7. And this is Jesus speaking. I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches." If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to be here this morning. And we are grateful for all the fathers in the room and for the ones that are just in our number and joining us online. We pray a special blessing on each of them. And we thank you that you are our Heavenly Father and you are above all things and you are here with us. We invite you into our service this morning as we attempt to honor you and glorify you with our words and our songs of praise and our attention just specifically on you this morning. And we once again pray for those who are not with us this morning, and we pray a blessing for them, and, and we pray the encouragement for those who are here and who are away from us. We just ask you to be with our hearts and our minds. May we focus on you as we seek to do your will and take what we learn here this morning into our lives this week at work and at home. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. As we prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, let's sing When We Meet in Sweet Communion. Mm -hmm. When we meet in sweet communion, where the feast divine is spread, hearts are brought in close. 
sir union while partaking of the bread God so loved what one dress measure loved and gave the best of heaven bought us with that match less treasure yes for us his life was given feast divine all else surpassing precious blood for you and me while we sup Christ gently whispers, do this in my memory. Precious feast, all else surpassing, wondrous love for you. Christ gently whispers, do this in my memory. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's pray for the bread. Father God, thank you for this time we have together. Um, thank you for this, uh, this moment in the service that we remember the body of Jesus and all that represents and the example that's set for us. And Lord, we pray um, as we leave this place to follow that example. And we're just so thankful for the sacrifice that that embodies. And uh, we ask that we take time to reflect and uh, on the things that are important and uh, to pray that uh, you guide us in everything we do. In God's name we pray, amen. Okay, let's pray for the cup. Lord God, thank you for um, the blood of your son that was shed for us. Lord, just thank you for the grace and mercy that comes with that blood that, that covers us, Lord. Lord, forgive us of our sins and forgive us of our trespasses. And Lord, uh, we pray that we are, are able to forgive those that have sinned against us, Lord, and, and put forgiveness in our heart. And Lord, we just ask as we, as we take this cup, we do so in a way that is pleasing to you. And guys, let me pray. Amen. <clears throat> this time we'll pray for the, uh, the offering. Um, a couple of options here. The basket is in the back. Also, if you, if you like the... Uh, New school, we have uh, the Venmo. You can scan right there. It's on the bulletin. I also wanted to, it was in an email Adam sent out. We have uh, Aaron Palmer coming August 6th. Is that right? Um, and he is a ministry in France that we support. And so if you want to learn more about that, uh, please be here on August 6th. I so just wanted to let everyone know. So let's uh, pray for our offering. Father God, thank you uh, for everything you've blessed us with. We know it all comes from you. Lord, as, uh, as we have this time to give, we play, pray we do it with a cheerful heart and, uh, and we use it to bless others and bless our community and, and bless those around the world to help them know you better. And Lord, we're just thankful for the blessings you give us each day. We know it all comes through you and, and we pray that, that we give unselfishly. And uh, as a church, Lord, we just pray that you guide our efforts and, and your, your funds are used in the best way possible. Thank you. And guys, let me pray. Amen.
We're going to sing Blue Skies and Rainbows this morning. Would anyone like to help me lead? Come on. All right. Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven. What I can see when my Lord is living in me, I know that Jesus is well. For the lesson, let's stand and sing, I am the vine. Bear precious fruit for Jesus today. Branches in him, no fruit ever bearing. Jesus has said he taketh away. I am the vine and the other branches. I am the vine, be faithful and true. Ask what ye will, your prayer shall be granted. The Father loved me, so I have loved you. Now ye are clean through words I have spoken. Living in me, much fruit ye shall bear. Dwelling in you, my promise unbroken. Glory in heaven with me ye shall share. I am the vine and the other branches. I am the vine, be faithful and true. Ask what ye will, your prayer shall be granted. The Father loved me so. I have loved you. Yes, by your fruits the world is to know you. Walking in love as children of day. Follow your guide, he passeth before you. Leading to realms of glorious day. I am the vine and ye are the branches. I am the vine, be faithful and true. Ask what ye will, your prayer shall be granted. The Father loved me, so I have loved you. Let's be seated.
Picking up where BJ left off in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 8. This is still Jesus speaking. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be in full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does... For the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. All right, good morning. Good to be with you again this morning, and happy Father's Day to you. Yeah, I, when I tested, I've been doing a lot of work on our PA system this past week. When I tested the lapel microphone earlier this week, it sounded beautiful. If it starts to sound ugly, somebody just give me an ugly face. And I'm trusting that it has to do with the microphone and not with the sermon or anything else. So, uh, yes, but, and I can turn it off at any point. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about Jesus' promise about sending the Holy Spirit to him. And I always like to share interesting books with you. So there's two copies of this book on the table. This is a book written back in 2009 called Forgotten God. And it's all about the work of the Holy Spirit, really in our our lack of emphasis on the work of the Holy Spirit. It's an easy book to read. It has a lot of stories of different uh, people and and ministry and missionaries. And so it's a a fantastic book and really an entry level, easy to read. So uh, if you're a, a reader, even if you're not, you're curious about it, I encourage you to to read this book. We've been talking about how God does not abandon his people. That's the promise that he made back in Hosea when we were doing our study in Hosea. And it's the promise that Jesus is making even still in John 15, which is what we're walking in through today. In the past chapters, he talked about how God is going to send the Holy Spirit, an advocate and a helper to them to keep God with them, to keep Christ with them always. And it's through the Holy Spirit that the church would then later be energized and empowered to carry out the mission that God had for them. But it's only through the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit that they had this power. And in the same way, if we feel powerless today in the church, it's likely because we've neglected our power source. Jesus is telling the apostles, that unless they abide in him and share in the relationship, the unity that Jesus has with the Father and that they will then have with him through the Holy Spirit living in them, unless they remain in that, they will not bear fruit. And yet his desire for them is to bear fruit. That's what we're talking about today. Let's pray and then we'll get into this text. Father, we thank you for, again for a new opportunity to be here today, Father. We do thank you for, for fathers, Lord. You are the, the good father of all, the father that all fathers uh, should aspire uh, to be like, Father. And we know that we fail. We know that we are imperfect, Father, but we know that we are perfected in Christ when we remain in him and when we submit to the cleansing and sanctifying work of your Holy Spirit in us, Father. I pray that we would all submit to that. I pray for all the fathers in this room that we would submit to that, Father, to be good leaders of our family, but more importantly, above all things, to to show your love to our families, Father. Uh, We pray for everything that we'll discuss today, Father, for our hearts, that we are convicted by the work of your Spirit. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Henry Light was a preacher in the early 1800s in a place called Lower Brigsome, which is a coastal town in England. And one thing that he did there was he worked with a lot of the sailors because since he was on a coastal town, a port town, there were tons of sailors coming in and going out. And that was the, really the primary profession of a lot of the men there in the area. And so what he did was he started a sailor's Sunday school. 
And he would not only uh, teach these, these sailors a uh, Bible, but he would also teach some of them how to read because some of them had never even learned how to read. And he would even go on the ships and, and work with them. He would go in their homes and work with their, their families. Uh, but in spite of that, he was, he was a very charming man. He was, he was a man who was really a good teacher to them and highly respected in that area. But he had frequent illnesses. And by the time he was 50, he developed tuberculosis. And a doctor encouraged him. He said, you've, you've got to get away from this, this cold climate that you're in, and you need to go somewhere warmer where you can breathe in some different air, some warmer, salty air. And so he spent a lot of his time in a warmer climate in a place called Nice, uh, Italy. And by 1847, he had gotten so sick that he realized he was near death and he needed to step away from this work of ministry. And so he went to this church in Lower Brigsome and he didn't want to just abandon them. He wanted to preach to them one more time. And so he went in 1847 and he preached his last sermon there and he shared the Lord's Supper with, his, uh, with the church family there. And then after that, he went home and he wrote down a poem and he gave the poem to his daughter. And soon after, he, he died just a few months later after he went back to Italy. The poem that he wrote was later put to music, and these were the words of it. We just got done singing it. Abide with me, fast falls the even tide. The darkness thickens, Lord, with me abide. He says, when other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, abide with me. That's what we were just singing. And I think about those words that he was writing really near death, And think about all the people that were in his church that he loved so much, that he had this relationship with, and yet he knows that relationship with them, as far as earthly matters are concerned, was about to end. And he wanted to preserve that somehow, but he was also knowing that the only way to preserve that love, that relationship between them, was to look to the eternal. And so he set his mind on God, and he said, God, I'm helpless without you, so You have to abide with me. I need you to abide with me. And I think about that because that's exactly what Jesus is saying here. And Jesus, unlike us, was always thinking about eternity. He was always talking about eternal matters, thinking about eternal matters. And he knew that his apostles needed something more than just a memory. We talked about last week how a lot of Hollywood movies talk about Someone who leaves and they say, I will be in your heart. I'll be with you always. But we know that really that just means the memory of you will be there. Jesus knew that his apostles needed something more than just a good memory of him. He knew the ministry that they were getting ready to go on. He knew the boldness that they would need. He knew the courage that they would need. He knew the conviction that they would need. And he knew they would need more than just a memory. They needed power. They needed divine power. Really, they needed him with them all the time. And that's what the Holy Spirit was going to do. He had this mission for them. And he said that without the Holy Spirit, he knew that they would never stay bold or stay encouraged. And think about that. Think about all the persecution that the apostles faced in the first century. How many of us could endure that just on our own strength? Yes, we might be bold for a day. We might be bold for a few weeks. But once the pressure ramps up, that's when things start to change. He knew they needed a divine boldness and a divine strength. And that's what the Holy Spirit was going to give to them. Listen to what he says, the passages that that BJ and, and Albert read for us. John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser or the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. It's the third time he's talked about bearing fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. What's he talking about there? 
He's thinking about what they need to do, which is build his kingdom, which is spread the news about him. And he desires that they would be fruitful in this, and not just go around and, and talking, but everyone reject it. No, he desires for them to bear fruit, and he has called them to this ministry. But he knows that unless they remain in him, unless they are continually connected to him and strengthened by him, they won't bear fruit. And the message for us is the same today. If our church is not spirit-led, is not spirit-empowered, how do we expect to bear spiritual fruit for the kingdom in our communities? Uh, A.W. Tozier was a writer who wrote this uh, really about 100 years ago. He said, if the Holy Spirit, this is a kind of a convicting quote, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from the church today, 95% of what we do would go on and no one would know the difference. Do you believe that? If the Holy Spirit had been withdrawn from the New Testament church, 95% of what they did would stop and everybody would know the difference. Do you hear what he's saying there? The difference? He's saying that if the Holy Spirit had been taken out of the apostles' life, of the first century church, everything that they did would change. Because you see that the church mission started on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out on them, and they are empowered. And what he's saying about the church really a hundred years ago when he's writing this, is he's saying we have gotten so far away from relying on the work of the Spirit in the church life that if you took the Holy Spirit out of it, so much of what happens would remain the same because we have become so dependent on ourselves. And I've spoken, I know that this is true because I've spoken with many of you who have said you never grew up talking about the Holy Spirit or hearing about the work of the Holy Spirit. And yet, it is so important to what Jesus is talking about here. He's saying that unless you abide in me, unless you are connected to my power, there can be no fruit for the kingdom. And that's what Tozer is saying. But let's look at that quote. How does that really hold up? Well, how's the American church doing today? Lifeway Research in 2020 said that around 70% of churches have less than 100 people in them. And think about our, our church. We, we fit that bill, even though we're in a, in a town. Cooperstown is over 4,000 people. Pleasant View is over 4,000. Springfield is, is way over that, that number. And yet, that is the case for the majority of churches. They also found in that research in 2020 that about 29% of non-churchgoers that they surveyed said that a Christian had ever spoken to them about how to become a Christian. Only 29% of people. And think about that. Put that to the test. How many non-Christians have you shared your faith with in the past week? How many non-Christians have you shared your faith with in the past week? It's a convicting question for us to think about. What's gone wrong? What is missing from this? One thing we tend to respond with is, well, the world is changing. And many of you who grew up in a different world, really, than the one that I grew up in, would say, it's different today. And it is. We talk about that a lot. Tolerance for Christianity is changing. It seems like it's declining. People's interest in the church or in Christianity is declining. It doesn't just seem like it's declining. It is, statistically. And we know this. But think about that. Are we really less spiritual than we were 50 years ago? Think about when Tozier is writing this. He's not writing this yesterday. This is 100 years ago. And he's saying, the church is so consumed with man-made things. It's consumed with our own strength that we have neglected the work of the Spirit in our lives. And what he's saying with that quote is that you can have a nice, orderly church, a church that's well-respected in the community, a good reputation, but it can be totally devoid of the Spirit's power. He's saying that orderliness and good reputation and a nice structure to the service does not equal spiritual power. How do we know if a, if a church is really 
possessing spiritual power. What does Jesus say? It bears fruit. In a Christian's life that is full of the Spirit, in a church's life that is full of the Spirit, there must be fruit. Or else we have to acknowledge, where is the Spirit? Because as soon as the Spirit was poured out on the apostles, they were adding to the number those who were being saved every single day, day by day. So what's changed? What's happening? Some of you maybe have heard of uh, Jerry Clower, the comedian years ago. I loved listening to Jerry Clower. Uh, but he had, this, he had this story about a, a church that was arguing about whether or not to put a chandelier in the church. And at some point, someone from the church spoke up and said, why are we talking about putting up a chandelier as bad as the church needs lights? And you get the point there, because the chandelier is the lights. And it's, it's humorous. But really, there's some double meaning to that, that story. That a lot of what we focus on has to do so much more with maintenance, or it has to do with what activity are we going to plan, or, or what event are we going to do, or what's the next topic for Bible study, or, or many of these things. But we're not asking, how's your prayer life? How is the Spirit bearing fruit in your life? What is the Spirit doing, and how is the Spirit directing us and guiding us in the church. And you have to acknowledge that this is why you see so much lack of desire to be a part of the church. You see so much lack of fruit in Christianity in America today. This is why you see uh, so many churches closing. There are churches, buildings that close their doors every single week all over America. It's happening all the time. And we're tending, we tend to blame the culture for this. But don't blame the culture because think about the culture that the Jews were living in. It was not a good culture. Yes, the Romans for a while allowed them to practice their religion as long as they paid their taxes. But think about what starts happening when Nero starts to, to rise up and, and really ramp up the persecution on the Christians. The apostles came to some pretty bad fates, and we'll talk about that in, in future weeks. It's not like the culture was very generous to Christianity in that time. It was very much against it. There were people talking about all of these pagan gods all the time, and yet, through the power of the Spirit, the Lord was adding to the number day by day. So don't blame the culture for the church's lack of growth, for the church's lack of power. That's totally on us. And it's totally a response to our lack of reliance on the Holy Spirit. The problem is, a lot of times we think we can bear these spiritual fruits on our own. Fruit of the Spirit is patient, so I've got to be more patient. I've got to be more kind to people. And so what do we do? We end up taking the same approach that the world takes and, and Think about things from a self-help perspective. But we were never meant to be more patient on our own or to be more kind or to, or to bear more fruit on our own. Where does that fruit come from? It comes from the vine. It comes from Christ. It comes from being connected to Him. And it comes ultimately through the Spirit. That's why Jesus is emphasizing so much that it's going to be better when the Holy Spirit comes. Because you will have a constant companion with you. And not just any companion, but God will be with you and will be working through you at all moments. And will be producing joy in your hearts. And the problem is, we don't experience this because we are not connected to the Spirit. I was talking with some youth at church camp in a Bible class last week. And they were going through the book of James and I was struck by something that James says in James 4 when he talks about worldliness and godliness. And he says the reason why there are fights amongst you in churches, the reason why you have all these passions waging war in your hearts, is because you desire godliness, but you also desire worldliness. And in James 4.4 4, he says you adulterous people. He calls them adulterers. And I thought about that and think, what does an adulterer want? An adulterer wants to keep the life that they have, 
but they want something else also. And that's what happens to us when we try to be good church people, but we also want to live like the world. And when I say live like the world, I don't just mean uh, doing a few worldly things, but think about how much time we spend with church people compared to the time we spend in the world, engaged in, in worldly things. And this is why there's such a lack of, of godliness in Christianity today, because we want to be worldly at the same time. And this should wake us up. This should convict us. This should show us we can't blame the culture for rejecting Christ when we still desire to do all of these same things that the world wants to do. If there needs to be power, if there's going to be power in the church, it must come from the Spirit, and it must come from us submitting to the work of the Spirit. That happens through prayer. That happens through reading the Scripture and allowing the Scriptures to convict us and not walk away when it starts to get a little invasive on our hearts. Transformation requires change. It requires that we give up something. And we can't do this if we're trying to hold on to all of these worldly cares that we have, worldly things. Brennan Manning was a uh, Christian writer years ago, and he said the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians. The single greatest cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge, listen to this, he's a Christian writer writing this, Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips but walk out the door and deny Him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. And his point is, how can you convince anyone in the world that there is joy in the Christian life when there is no joy in your life? When there is anxiety in your life? When you worry just as much as anyone else in the world worries who doesn't have these promises? He's saying that's why people look at the faith and they don't want any part of it because they don't see any power. They don't see any life or any joy in it. And this should convict us. This is something we really have to take into consideration and think about. Where is the joy? Where is the power in our church and in our spiritual life? James says if you abide in worldliness, essentially you can just go on watching your church and your Christian life stall out or experience a lack of power. Jesus says, What's the key to bearing fruit? It's to abide in Me. For apart from Me, you can do nothing. What does this mean for us today? How do we put this into practice? How do we think about these things? Jesus says, As the Father has loved Me, so I have loved you. Abide in My love. Verse 10, If you keep My commandments, you will abide in My love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. And listen, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy, that's Christ speaking, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. That's what Christ desires for Christians. If your joy does not feel full, it may be because you're relying on the world to satisfy you, to produce joy in your life. And yet Christ says, if you remain in me, keep my commandments, your joy will be full. You will have the joy that I have. The Spirit that raised me up from the dead will bring life to you today, even now. If you desire that, but you don't feel it, that's something to pray about. Let's pray together. Father, we thank You for Your Word that shapes us, that molds us, that convicts us. Father, we know ultimately that Your Word is truth and that Your Word is Christ. That He came to bring these words of life, these words of truth to us, Father. And that ultimately we find truth, we find joy, we find strength, 
in Him, through dwelling in Him, and through relationship with Him. Father, help us to see our great need and our dependence on Your Spirit to bring life, to bring power into our lives, into our churches, Father. Help us to see ways that we have depended on ourselves in our own spiritual life and in our church life, Father. And let this burden weigh heavy on our hearts so that we will depend on You, that we will surrender these things to You. Teach us to be spiritually dependent people in this self-dependent culture. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. We have an opportunity to come forward to be prayed for. I'll also be in the back. I'll remain around if I can pray with you about anything today. If you have a need, you can bring that forward. You can speak with me or one of the elders or or anyone that's close to you after that you're willing to share that with. Uh, Let's all stand now as we sing. Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with Him within the narrow road? Would you have Him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let Him have His way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. <clears throat> can fill your soul and you will see twas best for him to have his way with thee would you have him make you free and follow at his call would you know the peace that comes by giving all would you have him save you so that you need never fall let him have his way with thee his power can make you what you are to be his blood can cleanse your soul and make you free his love can fill your soul and you will see twas best for him to have his way with thee. Would you in his kingdom find a place of constant rest? Would you prove him true each providential test? Would you in his service labor always at your best? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you are to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see twas best for him to have his way with thee. I want to remind everyone this coming Wednesday night, uh, we will be back on our Wednesday uh, schedule. This is uh, the third Wednesday night, so it will be uh, Mexican night. So remember, if you have uh, something that you bring for Mexican night, uh, be sure and get that there. If you don't have something that you bring, bring your appetite. Uh, there's always plenty of, uh, plenty of good food on Mexican night. Uh, let's close now with take the name of Jesus with you. We'll sing the first and second verses. Mm-hmm. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where you go, precious name. Oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven. Take the name of Jesus ever. As a shield from every snare, 
If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy. <coughs> Please pray with me. Father, we come to you, Father, thankful that you are the vine, Father, that you provide us with life, Father, that you provide through your Son life with you. Father, we just ask that you um, continue to um, shine your light on us, Father, so that we can turn around and show it to those around us, Father, at work, Father, at school, Father, just um, in public, Father, that they can see your spirit, Father. Um, Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit work in us, Father, and that we can share the good news with others, Father. You're an amazing God, and we love you. We owe you so much, Father, and, un and, are, and are unworthy of so much, Father, but you bless us freely. Father, it's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen.